In 22 BBY, the Jedi Council had finally decided to send Republic troops in order to liberate the planet of Ryloth. The pleas of the Twi'lek Senator Orn Freeta would finally be heard. The Confederacy had strengthened its position on Ryloth. Would the Grand Army of the Republic be able to break the blockade? Let's take a look on Lore Reloaded. The occupation of Ryloth by the Confederacy was brutal. In order to assist the Rylothians, the Republic tasked Jedi General Anakin Skywalker, his Padawan Jedi Commander Ahsoka Tano, and Admiral Wilhoff Ularen to break the blockade. The task force would comprise three Venator-class Star Destroyers, the Resolute, Defender, and Redeemer. They would have to break the blockade of Captain Martuk, who had a droid control ship, as well as several munificent class ships that were meant to stop any attempt to liberate the planet. The initial plan was for Tano to attack and break through the Confederate fighter line. She was put in charge of Blue Squadron. Blue Squadron utilized V-19 Torrent Starfighters. Republic technology was generally superior in quality, more reliable, and maneuverable than Confederate counterparts. The attack was initially successful, Blue Squadron breaking through the droid fighters easily. However, Commander Tano had been pulled into a trap as Took brought in four more munificent class ships. Disregarding her orders to return, Tano pressed forward with Blue Squadron. Now is the time to bring in our reinforcements. Battle Cruiser 17, Battle Cruiser 19, attack position. Admiral, four more enemy cruisers have joined the blockade. You've got to warn those fighters. Commander, we've been caught in a trap! You're overreacting, Admiral. I can get us through. Blue Squadron, stay the course! You're all set, Blue Leader. I'm ordering you to return to the ship! This would turn out to be fatal, though, as Confederate reinforcements cut her squadron to ribbons. Additionally, Confederate forces broke through the lines and began to pound the Republic cruisers. Blue Squadron had taken heavy losses, with only three fighters returning. And the Republic cruiser Redeemer was completely lost. General Skywalker ordered a full retreat, having the remaining ships jump into hyperspace. The Republic forces had lost well over 7,400 clones in this battle alone. General Skywalker reached out to the Jedi Council to alert them of what had happened. Resources were tight at this point in the war, and if they could not break a hole in the defenses soon, those resources would need to be diverted elsewhere. It was at that point that Skywalker put a plan together. The Defender had sustained so much damage that it was nearly beyond repair. General Skywalker evacuated all personnel and offloaded all of the equipment that he could in a short amount of time. He then gave operational control to Commander Tano and ordered her to find a way past that blockade. Tano conferred with Clone Trooper Rex and another bridge officer on what their plan would be. I thought about that and well, I have an idea. Go ahead, Commander. If we took the Resolute and angled her hull against the incoming frigates, the bridge and hangar deck would be relatively safe from their attack. We could draw them in and then use the bombers to outflank them. The bombers would be too fast and they would be trapped. Even though there were doubts, and it was an unorthodox plan, Ahsoka insisted that it would work and preparations were begun. Meanwhile, General Skywalker arrived back in the Ryloth system. He pretended to want to surrender himself, his crew, and the Defender in exchange for aid to be delivered to the Twilight people. While discussing this possibility, a course was set for the Defender to ram the droid command ship. By the time Captain Took realized there were no personnel nor any equipment on the Defender, it was too late. Both Anakin and Took were able to board escape pods before the Defender and the droid control ship were destroyed from the ramming. Tano arrived with the remaining forces and put her plan into action. The Resolute turned on its side, presenting the lower decks as a tempting target to the droids. While the plan was unorthodox and some concern about this strategy was there, it was often a tactic for the Republic cruisers to turn themselves on their sides in order to escape or to shield other ships from getting hit. Also, the droids did not immediately attack, prompting the bridge crew to discuss whether they needed to retreat. However, Ahsoka urged patience, and ultimately the Confederacy did move forward with the attack on the Republic cruiser. With Confederate ships now in range, Republic BTL A4 Y wings launched from the opposite side of the Republic cruiser. They were able to completely decimate the enemy. With the blockade breached, Jedi General Obi Wan Kenobi was cleared to begin the ground operation. 
With a third of the task force destroyed, well over 7,400 men killed, General Kenobi was recorded in a flippant remark before landing on Ryloth. I won't even ask where the rest of Anakin's fleet is, or why he's in an escape pod.